There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic sauce, it's bloated and shameful, a pool of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. Ex love, ex tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of Elagic Zone. Do you really? Not you. Your days of giving a shit and being that type of animal were over. Do you really? You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why do you think you had your bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much over yourself. Got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Fear and apprehension. You should ask us out there first. Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscious sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. You can take it. You're a champion. from your mouth, and with it, an ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound, a clarion call from hell. This fan has two chain pull switches. 
One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. The lights are off. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey?
You are correct. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. It's too late. Like an image on film, the expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Uh, now? There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Because you're a police officer, sir. Okay, cool. I won't. She means it. She wouldn't defy authority, however sweaty and bloated it may look. First, I have to ask. Are you okay, sir? You look like you're about to throw up. Can I bring you something? She's right. Something wants to come out through your mouth, right in front of her, right here. It makes you put your hand on your stomach and swallow. Sir, you've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Try the expression. Come on, why are you still doing this? Alcohol raises testosterone levels, especially in men. The levels remain elevated after inebriation ends and the pain begins. You see comfort. It's only natural. She puts out her cigarette. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. And now... It never stops. Goodbye. The 
door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. The door is closed. Still no answer. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Still nothing. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray, light it up, and smoke the living shit out of it. The living shit. Your mesolimbic reward pathway does not mince words. It wants smokes. The door is closed. You should totally sing karaoke here, the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Of course, at this point, precise measurements of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard. Through a PA system. By other people. You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Sing the sad song. It's profound. You have to find something tragic to sing first, though. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you.
Something about it makes you feel bitter. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? Am I? Or did you ride in, take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room? Oh, it's not? You're right, it's not. He has no respect for you personally, but this man sees himself as a law-abiding citizen, and you a representative of that law. He tries to avoid outright conflict. No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. That period of my life is over. Not everyone who stands behind a counter is a bartender, okay? I'm the cafeteria manager. Mm-hmm. Hello, sweetie. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room.
The door is closed. Still nothing. Still nothing. There they both are, two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. Good, they're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. The door is closed. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize.
Yes. Well. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Good. But even if you haven't, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Sure, but did you take it down from the tree? So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? Oh. If you didn't have your badge, then that would be very bad. You would need to report it on my shortwave. But since you do have it, we can go straight to the task at hand. Welcome to Rivachol. Don't you welcome to Rivachol me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in the city. But I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. What he means is, fixation on the Revacholian nation 
makes it harder for Revachol to actually attain self-determination. Come on, man, I just said, uh, welcome to Rivachol. Uh, it's a lorry driver thing. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here, that I should watch myself and behave. But you see, I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. Whatever you say, officers. Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but uh, the dock workers are on strike, so uh, it's a sit and wait on your ass situation. Apples. Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had something to hide. Yeah, apples. I take it you had other questions? Uh, it's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of the races. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like common sheep. People who've studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. So, uh, naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Don't push your luck, Runt. Several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. What is what? Um, it's a raincoat. If you want to buy one, then it's only for Real. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. What's that magazine she's reading? You mean this? This is Pop Stars. It's got, like, famous people in it. It's not for sale. She pops her raspberry-flavoured bubblegum 
and nods. The lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with an apologetic half-smile. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... I don't know really long. Um, I don't know. No need to worry. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. Not really. Um, no. I didn't know him at all. Uh-huh. What do you want to know? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a, a pissing competition. His disdain is clear. This man would not use such an expression otherwise. You don't know? I assumed you were in on it. It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? Good. Me? I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Ah, if you insist. What do you want to know? What do you mean? I have no idea what you're talking about. I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. That's where his conversations with himself take place. You're super lucid, yet psychedelic. You don't need office supplies to connect to your nervous system. You're special. Good. Let's change the subject. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. Hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine, then it gives you money. You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so... Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some. Out there. Somewhere.
worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Life doesn't need to be a struggle. I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to Angry Hog René first. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. René. You're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime. See? Your munching and complaining have ruined my concentration. Ah, mon dieu. The pain in my back is unbearable. I can't even say if it's in my back or hip anymore. Feels like it's in both. I hope you pass out from it, you goddamn jellyfish. Men like you are the reason this nation is sinking. Shush. Ignore them. They don't know what they're doing. They're old. You are letting down yourself and the team. Get in the damn game already. Eyes on the ball, Dinky Winky. by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You'll make it work. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating, until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. of shit. What the hell is your problem? I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. Vandalized our game, son! We can't play petonk with fine pool!
Well, it damn well isn't. It's petonk. You ruined a petonk game. We want our bull back. Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you oil slug. You are as a goddamn bull. Good. Mistakes are forgiven, when men at least try to right their wrongs. I believe you will try. Now why did you approach us? Yes, why did you come here? It's unlikely they know anything about the murder. Just talk. It'll smooth things over. Old people like attention. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should've fought dirty. Like they did with this suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. This place is the damn beachhead, son. They had to soften the commies up first. Yes, the military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. He finds your lack of historic knowledge troubling, a sign of mental deterioration in the preceding generations. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got all René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course, they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players at the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding them. What do you think? Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains. 
I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachon. Or even if that damn clan Fussel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. This is just what the commies wanted. This was the plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. The suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? They forgotten already. It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. <laughs> 